and welcome to the IGCSEA channel. Today we'll cover the next part of momentum which includes the law of conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum is one of the most interesting things about our universe. Before I talk about the law of conservation of momentum, make sure that you already have an idea about what's momentum and what's impulse. If you don't, please watch part 1 of this lesson. Alright then, let's get started. Now watch the following representation. I want you to imagine what's happening. Let's say this is an empty box in deep space. And this box is filled of course with millions of particles, but for demonstration purposes I'm only showing four of them, represented by the smiley faces. Let's say those particles do have an initial momentum and they keep on moving in different directions. As they move within the box, they keep on colliding with themselves and colliding with the walls of the container, which generates impulses between them and they keep on changing their directions and their individual momentums. Now the law of conservation of momentum predicts something very interesting about the motion and the momentums of those particles. The law says that the total momentum of a system of particles or objects, in this case this is our system over here, the box filled with those four particles, if, those, if this system is not acted upon by external forces, there are no external forces on the system, such as for example forces of gravity or forces of friction or whatever other forces that could possibly affect them other than the collisions between them themselves. Now if that is the case, the total momentum, the total and not the individual momentums, will always be constant in magnitude and direction, regardless of any reactions between the parts of the system. So let me try and get one of those interactions, one of those collisions to explain one the meaning of this statement. Now let's look at those two particles in the center. Now the first one had a momentum in that direction and the other one had momentum in the opposite direction. That's during the collision. They are acting on each other. Now let's say this momentum was 5 uh, newton seconds and the other momentum, let's say it's negative uh, 3. Now why is it negative? Of course because it's in the opposite direction and momentum is a vector quantity. Now after the collision, currently what is the total momentum of these two objects? If we add them up, 5 minus 3, the total should be 2. So let's say after they collided, now this uh, particle moves in the opposite direction with a momentum of uh, negative 4. So if this momentum is negative 4, then definitely this momentum over here must be 6. Why? Because if you add the momentums, the individual momentum 6 plus negative 4, you get 2. Now this is the meaning of the statement. The total momentum of the system is always constant provided that there are no external forces acting on them. So before they collided, they had a momentum of 2. And after they collided, they still have a momentum of 2. The individual momentums changed, but the total momentum remained constant. Now that is really cool. Our universe is like calculating the momentums of each individual particle at an instant so that the total will always remain constant. That is the meaning of conservation of momentum. Momentum is conserved. You don't lose it. Now let's try to explain the law of conservation of momentum with some of the down-to-earth examples. Let's say we have this setting over here. Two trolleys with a spring in between them acting as our system, conserved system, a system with no external forces. Now that's our system over here. This is the system of conserved momentum because there are no external forces. The spring in between is compressed, which means when the hands are released, the spring is going to exert an internal force on this object and another internal force on the other trolley. Make no mistake, those are internal forces. Why? Because all those three objects, object A and the spring with object B, are considered part of the system. So whatever interactions, the collisions or whatever happens in between them, the internal forces between them will be generated 
but if we keep on calculating the total momentum of each and every component in this system, it will always be constant. Before going into any other analyzations of what's happening over here, we definitely need to set a direction standard. It will be our direction standard. Any momentum or any vector quantity to the right will have a positive value and anything going to the left will have a negative value. This is very important because momentum is a vector quantity. Remember, vector quantities, they have magnitude and direction. Now, when the hands are released, as expected, every trolley will move in the opposite direction. One trolley will have a momentum in that direction, a positive momentum because it's going to the right, while the other trolley will have a negative momentum because it's going to the left. Let's look into what just happened using the law of conservation of momentum. Now we know momentum equals mass times velocity. So before the separation, both objects over here had a momentum of zero. Why? Well, both were stationary. So if you multiply the mass by the velocity of zero, because they were stationary, you get a momentum of zero. So if you add them up, we want to find the total momentum. So we add the momentum of each individual trolley, you get zero plus zero, which is also zero. The total momentum before the separation is zero. So after the separation, the first trolley over here had a momentum to the right of value P. So let's say it has a value P and the other trolley had a momentum to the left because it's to the left, it must have a negative value. So when you add them up, P plus negative P, it has to be negative because it's in the opposite direction you get a value of zero. The total momentum was conserved. It was constant before it was zero and after the separation, it was also zero. The individual momentums changed. This is from zero to P and this is from zero to negative P, but the total remained constant or better remained conserved. Now let's further discuss conservation of momentum using another example, another system. Over here, you have the same two trolleys, but the first trolley in this case will be moving towards the second trolley. As it moves, they will collide and then they're going to move together. Notice the differences in speeds before and after the collision, and then we'll discuss after. Now let's look into what just happened using numbers. Look at the diagram that represents the collision. BC stands for before the collision and C stands for during the collision while AC stands for after the collision. So this is the path that was taken during the uh, collision. Now before the collision, let's say the initial velocity of the heavier trolley was four meters per second to the right. So since it's to the right, it has to be positive Four, and we, well, let's find its momentum, the momentum before the collision. So four times, what's the mass of this trolley? Well, as you can see over here, it's three kilograms. So four times three plus we have to find the individual momentum of each object before the collision. Well, let's find the momentum of the uh, smaller object over here. So its mass is one. But before the collision, as we saw just now, that it had a velocity of zero. It was stationary. So the total momentum before the collision equals 12. All right. Now let's do the same for after the collision. Now after the collision, both objects joined and moved together. So they, both of them, they do have one velocity and we are required to find that. Since they joined, I don't have two masses. I actually have one mass. What is the total mass over here? Well, this was three and this was one kilograms. So the total mass is four and we need to find the velocity. I don't know the velocity, so I'll just substitute it by the letter V. So four times V. Now this is the final momentum. There is nothing else moving. I mean, they're already joining together and moving together. And the final momentum before or uh, after the collision must equal what is before the collision. So let me just change the color. So therefore, 
for v, four times v, this is after the collision, must equal the momentum before the collision, which is 12. Therefore, definitely, the velocity equals 12 over 4, and you get 3 meters per second. Let's go to another example using a similar arrangement. Over here, you have the same two trolleys. However, this time, both of them will be moving towards each other with initial velocities. Then they are going to collide and move in the same direction. So watch what happens and then we'll analyze. Let's say before the collision, both objects had the same speed. Notice I said speed and not velocity because it has the same magnitude. This is 4 meters per second and the other one is also 4 but in opposite directions. They have same speed but different velocities. So if this was the case before the collision and they have the same masses, the heavier is still 3 kilograms and the lighter is 1 kilogram. That's what happened during the collision. And then after the collision, they joined and moved together. We are required to find the final velocity. So let's analyze. Before the collision, what was the individual momentum of each one? Well, for the heavier object, it was 3 times, that's the mass, 3 times the initial velocity, which is 4. Now plus, for the other trolley, it should be the mass, which is 1 times, however, this time it should be negative 4. The velocity is negative because it's moving to the left. So if we find that the total momentum would be 3 times 4, 12 minus 4, so 12 minus 4, you get a momentum of 8. That's the total. Let me just write it down to emphasize. We are finding the total momentum. How do we find the total? By adding the individual momentums of each component in the system. All right. So after the collision, we are required to find the final velocity of the whole thing. Now, after the collision, we don't have two trolleys anymore or two objects. It's just one because they joined and moved together. So what is the mass of this new object? Well, the initial for the first one was 3 and the other one was 1. So the total mass is now 4 times the velocity that we are trying to find. That's the final momentum and that is the initial momentum. According to the law of conservation of momentum over here, they should be equal. So let me just change the color. So 8 before the collision must equal the momentum after the collision, which is 4V. Therefore, V equals 8 divided by 4. You get 2 meters per second. One more final example to make sure you got the concepts. Now this time, we'll have the same trolleys and the first one will be moving towards the other one while the other is stationary. After they collide, they are going to move separately. So watch what happens first and then we will go and analyze. So let's say the initial velocity for the heavier object was 4 meters per second before the collision and it was moving to the right, therefore it's positive, according to our standard over here. Now the other object was stationary, so let us find the total momentum before the collision. Well, the momentum of the heavier object is its mass, 3, times its velocity, which is 4, plus the momentum of the other object, which is 0, therefore the initial momentum is 12. That's the total momentum before the collision. All right. Then they collided over here and after the collision, they moved separately. The velocity of the heavier object is given. We are required to find the velocity of the lighter object, of the lighter trolley. So let's do that. Okay, let me change the color. All right. After the collision, the heavier object had a mass of 3 and a velocity of 2 so 3 times 2 that's the momentum and it's positive because they are all going to the right now plus the lighter object over here had a mass of 1 and a velocity of we don't know it we'll just call it v2 
Now this time we have to name V2 and V1 because they are moving separately. Alright, so before the collision it was 12 and after the collision it's 3 times 2 plus 1 times V2. So let me just simplify this first. Uh, so 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 times V2 that's V2. And this is after the collision which must equal the total momentum before the collision. Why? Because momentum is conserved. Why is it conserved? Because there are no external forces acting on the objects. The objects acted on themselves. However, no external force was provided. So 6 plus V2 equals 12. Therefore, V2 in this case would equal 12 minus 6. And that's it. You get 6 meters per second. Alright, finally, before we end this lesson, I want you to look at real life cases that represent the examples we just discussed. So over here, as you can see, this is the case where the spring was in between the trolleys. And as you notice, the lighter trolley is moving faster than the heavier trolley. Now, why is this? Well, since the momentums must be opposite in magnitude and direction, the lighter trolley has lighter mass. Therefore, it needs more velocity to balance in magnitude the momentum of the heavier object. And this is, for example, two over here. This is the uh, astronaut. Uh, this is example comes from space. Uh, the first object is moving towards the second object and then they collide and move together. Now in space, it's much more easier to see momentum and the law of conservation of momentum. Well, that's because in space there are no external forces such as weight and friction and all that. So watch. They move together. All right. Two more examples. So let's see them. And here this is when both objects were moving towards each other and then after the collision they move together. So watch it again. They move towards each other, they collide and then they move together. And for example four, uh, one trolley was moving towards the other and then after the collision they move separately. So watch trolley A hits trolley B. Notice how trolley A slowed down and trolley B speeds up why well because some of the momentum of a was given to trolley b thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed all parts of the lesson see you in the coming lessons don't forget to like subscribe and share igcse 8